In some old school games, and even sometimes more recent games, you may fight a boss or mini boss monster early on, but then later in the game that enemy will reappear as just a regular enemy. The cynical me may think, oh wow, a reused enemy? How dare they try to conserve resources in this game that's maybe a hundred kilobytes. But I also think it's a great way of mechanically displaying player growth. You struggle with that guy early on, now you're wiping the floor with him. In some games, you can't beat an enemy until you get a specific power up and then you smoke them very easily. Those sections can be pretty cool, but I find it more interesting when it's done more organically over the course of a game. An example that immediately comes to mind is Monster Hunter. You start the game with some cobbled together armor and wielding basic looking rusty weapons. First quest, just go gather some ferns and mushrooms, nothing too crazy. Alright, I can handle that. Next quest, go fight a couple small raptors, okay it's not too bad. Next quest, fight the daddy version of those raptors, alright a little tricky, he's got some moves, but nothing too crazy, I can handle this. But then at one point or another, most first time players will hit that wall enemy. When the game goes, oh were you having fun? Getting a grasp on the controls? Well I'ma teach you how this game really works, in the same way that a Catholic Bayonetta would teach you bible verses. For me, that enemy was Catchawacka back in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. I died so many times and realized I did not have a firm grasp on the gameplay loop or the 3DS controls. Nowadays though, I can whoop that angry lemur's ass blindfolded, but only because I died so many times to him and got better at the game. In Monster Hunter, you craft weapons and armor from their corpses, a little morbid, but they serve as a visual reminder of the enemies you've persevered through. I love it when in games you start out with a more of a simple outfit, but by the final stretch you're all dripped out like you're at the Met Gala and the theme is Slay. The real end game in Monster Hunter has always been Fashion Hunter. And you keep going, fighting progressively stronger and stronger monsters, to the point where you're essentially fighting gods and forces of nature, like the Mega Dong flame a Golden Mantis who has a side hustle as a mecha pilot, Lightning Storm God Dragon who attacks with fart tornadoes, the contrast of raptors at the start of the game, and the dragon from beyond space and time who's smiting you while orbiting a black hole at the end of the game, is a mechanical way to demonstrate player progression and increase player ability. Zelda Butwa. You start the game naked, and the world is fucked. Game of the year. You walk around Hyrule, see all the damage. This is environmental storytelling. Ganon did all of this, you know he's a tough customer. Meanwhile, you only have three hearts. Still one more than a Time Lord, but any enemy is able to kill you fairly easily. When you encounter these guardians early on, you can maybe take out one or two, but big death lasers pointing at you while you're armed with a tree branch? Yeah, yeah maybe I don't need a Fee or Navi dialogue box to pop up to know that maybe I'm, uh, I'm not ready for this fight right now. But by the end of the game, you've upgraded your health, your stamina, your gear, found better weapons, you're a mental and mechanical master of the game from having played it more, maybe even after weeks and months of getting bullied time after time after time again by those guardian lasers. Piano music giving you a panic attack like it's Mario 64. You went and crafted the most C3PO looking anti guardian outfit to storm Hyrule Castle and go on a guardian murder spree. Hell yeah, take them all out. I'm pretty sure this was the plot to the movie Joker. I, I don't know, I didn't see it. But, anyways, guardians used to pose so much threat early in the game, but because you prepared, they pose no threat later in the game, which follows the game's central theme. Hyrule fell because they didn't have time to prepare, but now that you do have the time to prepare, it's a lot easier. By the time I fought Ganon for the first time, I had done every divine beast and every shrine. This guy destroyed a whole kingdom, and I beat him in like two minutes. Maybe I overprepared. Well, wait, hang on. There's a second form, and you shoot him with arrows in the glowy spots because it is a video game. Don't get me wrong, I had fun, and it's all about the journey, not the destination. But maybe I did not need to do all 120 shrines to necessarily be ready for this fight. The indie game Inside. It's one of those spooky, wordless storytelling type games. You spend the whole game sneaking around a creepy atmosphere, hiding in the shadows, getting attacked by angry dogs, swimming away from murder mermaids. Ooh, I did not like that part. But then at the end of the game, well, I won't spoil it for you. Go play it for yourself. The game is like four hours long and is always on sale for like two dollars, but it's very satisfying. However, during Inside, you get little sprinkles of times where you stop running and you get to beat a boss. And each pile of sprinkles is bigger than the last time. So by the end of the game, it's one big old sprinkle typhoon. The expectation in most games is that the player ability will increase over the course of the game, be it through character strength, player ability, or both. However, you can also twist the usual 
usual power dynamic progression for narrative reasons. Back to Zelda, but this time the boat Zelda. I recently speed ran this game for charity and got pretty close to the world record, yep, uh huh. You start the game as Cat Link. On your island is buried a treasure chest, but also your sister gets kidnapped by a big bird and you are powerless to do anything. So of course you do the logical thing of teaming up with pirates to get her back. You catapult yourself to the fortress where she's being held and immediately lose your sword, so you can't do any real fighting here. If an enemy spots you, you get caught and sent to jail. So you have to sneak around enemies Metal Gear Solid style. And by the end of it, the bird catches you anyways. And Ganondorf is all like, he's not even worth my time, baka. And throws your ass out of there like you didn't want to tip at the strip club. So it's safe to say that your first adventure could have gone a little better. In Dragon Roost Cavern, as the mini boss of this game's first true dungeon, you fight your first moblin. He gets a whole cutscene where he's air dropped in. That's how you know he's the real deal. And this guy packs a punch and it takes your rinky dink sword a billion hits to kill it. The Forsaken Fortress from earlier was full of moblins and as soon as you get hit with one haymaker punch, it's immediately apparent how in over your head you were earlier. But you manage to beat him. Then in the next dungeon, the Forbidden Woods, you fight two moblins. A harder fight for sure, but it's going better this time. You know why? Cause I got the boomerang. Crikey. Then in the Tower of the Gods, for the next mini boss, you fight a dark nut for the first time. It's this armored up evil knight. You can't even damage him from the front at all. You gotta cut his bra straps first. He's only vulnerable when he's naked, just like real life. But after you you clear this prototype Sheikah Shrine Trial, you go down into Hyrule Castle beneath the sea, and you see these previous dungeon mini bosses all frozen in time. Thank goodness everyone is frozen in place. Could you imagine if I actually had to fight all these guys? It would be impossible. What's that? Pull the Master Sword? Oh yeah, sure thing. That definitely won't lead to anything bad happening. <laughs> I was, I think, 10 years old playing the GameCube version for the first time. Pretty sure I turned the game off right here for like a month. So you have to fight your way out of here. But this time, you've got the Master Sword, the Blade of Evil's Bane, and it serves up everyone a piping hot ass whooping. This sword is incredible! And you don't need the boat to radio in and be like, the sword is powerful, trust me, bro. These enemies used to get their own introductory cutscene and take like 10, 20 hits to kill. Now you're plowing through all of them like you're a tornado through door these house. Now that I have this invincible sword that makes me invincible, let's boat back over to Ganon's house, break down the door like you're the popo. Hey Ganon, we have a warrant for you to catch these hands! You defeat Phantom Ganon in a glorified Wimbledon match. I don't know why this is so common in Zelda games, but then again, tennis is an evil sport, so it checks out. Remember having to sneak by all these guys like a little beach? Well now you get to go on a Moblin murder rampage. Hey, remember me? Now you remember nothing! Watch this next move! I'm about to turn your ass into bacon! Oh, what the fuck? This stupid ass game, I hate this game. You get a rematch with the bird that started the whole game and you turn him into KFC, family style. Up to this point in the game, you've defeated Goma. You saved a little plant from a big plant. You've defeated a face with two floating hands. I'm surprised they never brought this boss design back in any Nintendo game ever. You've defeated Nigerian Ganon and you've just beat Foghorn Leghorn. And you know what? While I'm here, we're just gonna kill Ganondorf right now. I've got my super sword and it doesn't work against him. Uh-oh. Ganondorfers are like, why do you think the enemies came back to life when you pulled the Master Sword? Whoopsh, you big stupid idiot. Whoopsh, you piece of shit dumbass idiot. Whoopsh, I'm more powerful now. Whoopsh, you thought this was the final boss. Whoopsh, there's still three more dungeons. Whoopsh. The game hypes you up getting the Master Sword making you feel like a hero, only for the floor to drop out beneath you and the game hypes up Ganondorf instead. I like this Ganondorf because he will not hesitate to punch a child. Xenoblade Chronicles 1. I try to be as major spoiler free as possible, but I need to talk about the game to talk about the game. So there are evil robots in this game that are hard to fight, but the main character Shulk gets a magic laser sword that is really good at fighting the robots, so he vows to kill all the robots. Early on in the game, you fight Zord, he's this big ass cockney robot shows up and he's all like hello governor -o 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 -o. and you can't beat him your robo slaying super sword doesn't really work too well on him like it does the other robots then he teases you kidnaps your friend's brother and deuces i think zord just hates city planning you venture all the way down into the ether mine i'll be honest guys this is the worst part of the game this stretch kind of sucks ass and you get to the bottom and you fight zord again and you need to do a very specific combo to open up a small window of time to damage him at all this is the game 
game's way of mechanically showing how strong Zord is and how amateurish you are. Even after doing a ton of damage to him, your team barely beats him, basically by ramming a forklift into him to knock him to a pit of acid. Oh my god, we finally beat him! Fuck that guy! Let's take the elevator to get up on out of here! Why did the elevator stop? Oh, you gotta be kidding me! So you fight him a third time while he's trying to last chance Balrog you. While he's barely alive, his robot body is all burned to hell and he's still coming after you. They do not make haters like Zord anymore. And finally get out of there. What a relief. We had to fight this guy three separate times to beat him. The game established through both the hurdles in the gameplay and the frequency in the story that this Zord guy is one tough motherfucker. But we beat him and we're feeling good. So right after beating one Zord, like seven more Zords immediately show up, along with the robot from the start of the game who killed Redacted. What? What do I do? See, I'm invested. This is an unwinnable situation. Do I think there's gonna be a TPKO? No, it's only hour six of this 50 hour game. But do I wanna see how the gang is possibly gonna get out of this one? Absolutely. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below with moments and games that made you feel like a baller. And today's comment code word is, uh, door. Comment door if you made it all the way through the video. And, uh, that's it. Video's over.